This video is from a YouTube show called Top 5 Beatdown on the channel Watcher. In it, the host, co-host, and a guest count down, discuss, and sometimes argue over their respective top five lists for a chosen subject, usually something banal or inconsequential. In this case, the topic is top five food vessels, or foods that you use to transport other foods. Think bread, tortillas, pita, and the like. Not exactly earth-shattering subject matter, and yet, Within this episode, I picked up on something intriguing that I, well, I needed a dictionary to truly define. Xenophobia is a concept I think most are already familiar with, but it is defined as a fear and hatred of anything that is foreign. It is a view that is almost universally looked down upon and is most often associated with people that hold conservative viewpoints. But as Newton's third law teaches us, for every action there is an equal or opposite reaction. So what would that look like in this case? What would be the opposite of xenophobia? And if it's true that xenophobia is typically exhibited by those on the political right, would it be something found in its counterpart on the left? The antonym for the word xenophobia is xenophilia which is defined simply as an appreciation for foreign people, manners, customs, or cultures. What I find interesting about that definition is that despite it being the supposed opposite of xenophobia, it doesn't sound nearly as severe. I mean, would you say that the opposite of appreciation is hatred? Also, despite containing the suffix philia, most often associated with fetishes that I won't mention here on YouTube, when it comes to other cultures, it's merely a mild fondness. So perhaps I'm simply looking for the wrong word, or looking at it the wrong way around. Now, oikophobia is defined as a tendency to criticize or reject one's own culture and praise other cultures. While more useful, this definition, again, is not nearly as severe as xenophobia, whose definition includes the words fear and hatred. But what do either of these words have to do with three guys talking about bread? Well, I'm about to show you. So from left to right, we have Stephen, Ryan, and Andrew. Despite their differing backgrounds and ethnicities, they have two things in common. First, they were all formally employed by BuzzFeed. I don't think it's a far stretch to say that BuzzFeed's political leanings, at least outwardly, were skewed far to the political left. The other thing they have in common is that they were all born and raised in America. Now, like damn near everything else in American culture, our culinary history is most closely related to Western Europe. This includes the sandwich, as it came to be known in England in the 18th century. Many sandwiches known the world over were invented here in America. The hamburger, the po' boy, the Reuben, the cheesesteak, the club sandwich, many of these being invented with busy American workers in mind. The hot dog, owing to its likely German origin, was also invented here. The stromboli, the panini, the meat pie, the sausage roll are all largely steeped in European culinary tradition. Hell, just in France you have the croissant, the bagel, brioche, pastry, the tart, all of which are used to transport food into mouth. So there should be no issue for three Americans to think of the innumerable ways in which Americans and Europeans get foods into other foods for a fast, efficient meal or snack. Okay, Stephen, Ryan, and Andrew, what have you got for us? Injera, bread in Ethiopian cuisine. The pearl leaf. This was made popular in Korean barbecue. Dumplings. Sushi rice. Tortillas. There it is. And I will also have to reveal my number two is a corn tortilla. <laughs> Roti Chinai. Yes. That's, that's Thai restaurants as well as in uh, Indian restaurants. It's all over the place. Roti Chinai is the Malaysian. My number one edible vessel is leaves. Number one is a flour tortilla. <laughs> Oikophobia, a tendency to reject one's own culture and praise other cultures. Am I saying that foods from other cultures are inherently inferior to those of European and American descent? Certainly not. Am I saying that injeras, tortillas, and roti aren't deserving of praise? Also no. But remember, these guys aren't making a list of great foods that more people should know about, or even that they are just as good as the foods people in the West are more accustomed to. They're saying that they're better. So, for example, every day Parisian bakers come to work at 4 in the morning. They take what's known as a starter, or poolish, which is a yeast mixture that's been fermenting overnight, and mix in other ingredients to form a dough. That dough is kneaded and then fermented again. 
Then the dough is folded and kneaded again before being allowed to proof. Then it's formed into loaves and folded again to make sure the seams are ideal. Then it's left to proof again. Then it's baked, usually with some sort of water source in the oven so the steam created forms a perfect texture that is crispy on the outside and pillowy soft and chewy on the inside. It is a process that took generations upon generations, literal centuries to perfect, and can be traced back to when Europeans first made ovens out of brick. And I'm really sorry to all those French bakers who wake up well before the sun rises, day after day, to continue the tradition of making finely crafted baguettes, croissants, pastries, and other breads. But your heritage, culture, and hard work simply don't hold a candle to a handful of masa, a pinch of salt, a splash of water, and 30 seconds on a hot griddle. Because to people who have developed a fear or outright contempt for the culture and history they were born into, none of your achievements will ever measure up to the most rudimentary efforts of anyone else. Or maybe that's too harsh. I don't know. But oikophobia is one of those things that once you are aware of it, you notice it everywhere. And particularly from people that it's safe to say are politically on the left. Exoticism is defined as a romanticization, fetishization, or commodification of ethnic, racial, or cultural otherness. That definition emerges from post-colonial theory, an academic view that, again, it is not a stretch to say is very, very left. But there exists, at least in my belief, a blind spot for this, by many of the people who would insist they adamantly oppose exoticism. I mean, how can it be considered wrong to use cultural symbols as adequate definers for a people's complex history and culture, yet perfectly acceptable to use that Ethiopian restaurant that you go to? Yeah. If you haven't experienced eating Ethiopian food, it is one of the best food having times you could have. I don't think I even have a point here besides this. I wish people didn't think of denigrating their own culture as a shorthand for celebrating others. It's not offensive to me, it's just interesting to consider that getting a shawarma from the halal truck doesn't make you enlightened or well-traveled. It doesn't get you any closer to understanding the lives and histories of the people who produced it. And holding all other cultures to lower standards than your own really isn't the progressive ideal you think it is. 